By a show of hands, how many of you wear sneakers? Okay, now how many of you would pay to attend an NBA basketball game or attend one? Okay, so let's, let's imagine this. You're at this basketball game wearing your favorite sneakers and you have a chance to get a photo with your favorite basketball player. All you have to do is wait in line. So of course you wait in that line, not even worrying about how long you'd be waiting for. So after an hour, you eventually get your photo. And what's the first thing that you do? Text that photo to your family and friends. Then you post it on social media. All of a sudden, there's a rush of likes and comments, and you're feeling pretty good about yourself. You got to wear your sneakers, your team won, you got your photo, your friends and family are freaking out about this photo. So you end the night by buying a souvenir so you can remember this forever. That's a pretty amazing experience, right? Now, what would you say if I told you that you've just replicated the phenomenal hype experience in streetwear? Streetwear is an especially niche sector in fashion that includes sneakers, graphic t-shirts, hats, exclusive collaborations, limited edition products, skate and lifestyle brands, and more. Streetwear has become to represent a lifestyle that revolves around urban culture, encompassing music, fashion, and art. One of the biggest brands in streetwear today is The Hundreds. This classic Californian streetwear brand and media platform began in 2003. Over the past 14 years, this brand has been known to offer perspective in street culture, push boundaries in their collaborations, and emphasize creation based on people over product. So it was a complete shock that at the end of 2015, when Bobby Hundreds, the chief creative officer of this pioneer streetwear brand, had found himself in an ironic plot twist. Because contrary to a marketable slogan that states, the hundreds is huge, he admitted in an essay that this was one of our worst years on record. Worst years on record. Now those words echo describing the current state of streetwear turned viral and loomed over the industry's head like a ticking demise. See, in the past recent years, the future of streetwear has been debatable because of such factors such as the hunt is gone, hyper-accelerated trends, oversaturation of products, and limited releases becoming the norm for all retailers. Now we're at the beginning of 2017, and the question has shifted to how much are we willing to pay for the hype? So what changed in one year? For the threat of a cultural lifestyle has now become a flourishing, valuable commodity. Experiences. Experiences have created this new sector in streetwear hype that's been addictive for consumers because of its immersive, full participation. How many of you know someone who attended or attended yourself any of these events or places? the St. Pablo Tour, Drake's Summer 16 Tour, the Broad Museum in Los Angeles, Coachella, Justin Bieber's pop-up shops, or ComplexCon. Now think about how many of you shared your attendance or watched somebody's experience through Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or Snapchat. That hype that action of attending to share, the act of watching and discovering all builds to become this addictive experience that's constantly feeding us until it is our turn to share an experience. And at the end, we want to cap all this by purchasing merch, some type of souvenir or, or product that's a tangible, lasting experience that's apart from the instant gratification we, we receive through our peers and followers on social media that exchange and transmit between the reality and the virtual viral world is creating an experienced economy that is changing the trajectory in retail, especially in streetwear. 
As an industry that is tightly connected to the gears of its people, streetwear is hit first with what the generation is experiencing. Internet and retail it has become a working catalyst and a major form of communication that's constantly sharing news and trends. For retailers, it's an avenue to advertise products, collections, and style tips that have greatly impacted on how we shop today. Because today, everybody wants to become an influencer or somebody we follow on social media because they portray a look or an attractive lifestyle that convinces us to buy a product or attend events. Our friends and idols share their outfit of the days, promote events, and tag brand affiliations that encourage us to mimic or be inspired. Because of this, trends have globalized even faster by being categorized through hashtags. These trends gain exposure through algorithms and rely heavily on viral activity. Now, that's a lot of hype. And streetwear is all about that hype. It's exclusivity, it's freshness. But you can assume that this can get pretty oversaturated. With globalization and a plethora of independent e-commerce platforms, the internet and retail is crowded with products and brands. So how do we resuscitate this when it is so oversaturated? Surprisingly, the biggest ally to resuscitate streetwear is also respon responsible for challenging its longevity, the viral world. Social media is a straight connection that people adapt to and works especially for younger consumers. Millennials, who are persons born between the early 80s to 2000s, have now become to overtake baby boomers as the largest living generation and are now in the position to carry the bulk of the spending power. And they love social media. Social media gives them a sense of worth through the number of followers, likes, and comments, yet provides a sense of individualism as you can curate your platform to however you please. Aside from that, you become part of this community, being categorized through what you post or who you proclaim to be. The power of hashtags further networks your posts, your photos, experiences and narratives, and connects them to those that are similar. So how can streetwear monetize or capitalize on this? Again, through experiences. Creating experiences attracts a millennial customer because it offers them a chance to capture their own perspective while still being part of a global narrative when shared on social media. The allure of posting experiences through social media creates a feeling of exclusivity. Even if an event is made open to the public, such as a concert or a convention, Sharing on social media gives an all-access pass to your personal perspective that makes it one of a kind. Essentially, you're creating an experience. You're portraying an experience. You're inviting others to join in, telling them what they're missing out on, and essentially bragging about where you are. What you're doing is creating an exclusivity. That hype, your personal perspective, is the exclusivity, and attach a product to that viral-driven experience, and the hype increases even more. We are in an era of the experience economy, a concept in which the memory of the experience itself becomes the product. People are more inclined to share these experiences because of social media, but nothing says more than saying that I was there than buying a souvenir than buying a souvenir that outlasts the feed on what we post. A great example of this is tour merchandise. Tour merch and pop-up shops have become this phenomenal experience that's perfect on sharing on social media. The, this experience has, a type, has exclusivity and hype within it, designed through it, as it is designed as a retail concept 
or installation that's unlike, unseen, or uncommon from any other regular store. There's also a feeling of accessibility because you, it's only open for a duration of time or only allowing certain number of people inside, creating a line and waiting period that increases the hype even more. Now to emerge has become this reactive multimedia experience that either prepares you for a sold out show, states that you are a fan, prepares you for a concert, or seals your experience. These experiences are further elevated through, by, by sharing on social media because you're placing tangibility on emotions such as hype and excitement by giving proof when you are in a line at a concert or at a pop-up shop. Kanye West triumphed this in 2016. For his tour, he opened up 21 pop-up shops worldwide for a weekend only to share his ultra-hype merchandise. Each city had its different design and colorways. For that weekend, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and Snapchat were filled with fans and consumers who were in line, some up to 14 hours long, just to get a hat that was $45, graphic t-shirts that were 55, hoodies for, for 105, and so on. But although tremendously hyped, the store layout from how it was designed to how people were posed in their photos didn't vary that much. Moreover, it was discovered that his merchandise were printed on Gildan as its tags were still attached. Gildan is known for being an inexpensive activewear wholesaler. It has a reputation of being lower tiered or cheaper quality with blanks costing less than $2 a piece. With a markup above 90% just for his t-shirts and, and long sleeves, people had mixed reactions. But fans were not only still willing to buy a piece of pop culture history before its perceived authenticity. How much are we willing to pay for the hype? because countless invitations play on Kanye West's tour merch, but it's the hype of the moment, its experience is what makes it authentic. And when a consumer is devoted to that experience, they will pay for the product regardless. How we buy is evolving, especially in streetwear. It is now just, it's, a, it's now beyond just the actual product or being one of a kind, it is transforming into a scavenger hunt to search for the latest hype through experiences. We've embarked upon a time when it's important for brands and companies to create authentic experiences to magnify someone's personal perspective. We've seen from ComplexCon, the first streetwear convention that was made open to the public, the importance and limitless possibilities that the experienced economy has. This two-day-long convention in Long Beach, California, had a convergence of music, fashion, food, and art. It was celebrated highly through curated booths. It included exclusive retail and merchandise, installations, panels, music and concerts, and a merch section. It brought together creatives, consumers, brands, celebrities, and musicians all under one roof. It was as if experiencing what we would see on our feeds, only to capture it and then put it out onto social media again. But everyone's experience was their own. No matter how many times we saw the same backdrop or bought the same product, we continued to create and feed into the hype. So I have to ask, how much are you willing to pay for the hype? Because we stand in long lines and pay for pricey products, but are we attending these events or buying these things because it's fulfilling a want or expressing our personal style? Or are we buying into the possibility to increase our social clout? This insta-hype that we've created is altering how we shop and how we experience events. But as consumers, we should ask ourselves, how lasting is the experience we're buying into? 
because we're constantly being fed more week after week. It is important to ask these questions whether you're a brand or a consumer because the experience economy has shifted how we consume retail and events. So what is more important then? The product or an authentic experience? And which one will carry out the hype in streetwear? Thank you. Thank you.